Hi, my name is Mary Kane, and I'm a professor in the Department of Psychological Sciences at Kansas State University. When I was a graduate student, I, like many other graduate students, had a very old car. And uh, important point for this whole story is I know very little about cars and how they work and things like that. The car started dripping oil, so I bought it into a chain mechanic and they fixed, fixed the oil leak. So I was driving the car home and I noticed the smell of burning oil in the car. I got to my home and uh, lifted the hood. I know nothing about cars, but I felt like maybe if I lifted the hood, magical unicorns would appear and tell me what was going on. And a dipstick, the thing that sticks into the oil so you can see how much oil you have, was actually shot out and made a dent in my hood with the pressure at which it shot out. And uh, it really smelled like burning oil. So I went in and called the mechanic people and told them about the dipstick and the dent in the hood. And they said, oh, don't worry about that. Just put it back in. Now, if you know anything about cars, that's like a really big deal. And I mean, your engine pressure is off. I had no idea. So I was like, okay. And then um, I said, it really smells like burning oil. And they said, oh, we were out of degreaser at the shop that day. And I said, is it safe to drive? Do I need to bring it back in? They said, no, it's completely safe. Nothing is wrong. Next morning, bright and early, I head out to go to school, start driving in, and I smell the burning oil. I'm like, ah, dang, it still smells. So I keep driving, and about a mile, uh, you know, a little less than a mile from campus, uh, smoke starts pouring out of my vent. So I'm like, well, this, this can't possibly be normal. So I weirdly complete my drive and park in my parking lot, and here I make a big mistake. Again, I know nothing about cars. I lift the hood again. I turn the car off, I lift the hood again. Now. Not knowing there was a fire, that was the worst thing I could have done because it let a lot of oxygen in, but I lift the hood, huge fireball erupts. So at this moment, what I should have done is grab my phone and call for help, but no, again, I made another bad decision. Uh, in the back seat of my car with my hard drive with my computer with all my dissertation data on it. So, um, you know, super important for a graduate student. I, for whatever reason, thought that was more important than perhaps going into a burning car. So I climb into my back seat and I get out all my dissertation data on my hard drive and other few other things relating to my dissertation and take them all out of the car and bring them to a safe spot, at which point I call for help, thankfully. So now um, a lot is happening. My car is fully engulfed. Uh, I'm parked near trees, I'm parked near other cars, I'm worried about burning down trees, burning down other cars, fires there, police there, for reasons I don't still understand, the FBI was there. Um, a lot is happening. At this point, a professor I know from my program comes walking out. I'm like, oh good, maybe they uh, could help me out because I'm giving statements to the police and stuff. Like maybe they'll have some insight into what I do here. But no, they actually tried to sell me a vehicle on the spot with the police, fire, and FBI right there. Try to sell me a used vehicle, no test drive, low price of five thousand dollars. I decline this generous offer and continue to deal with my problem. My car burns to the ground, and literally all I had left uh, was two back tires and a charred rear license plate. So. While this was not a great day, obviously, um, I learned a lot about cars and the experience, but I also now have a wonderful story to use to demonstrate Pavlovian conditioning in my classes. Pavlovian conditioning is a core concept in psychological science. It's a pairing of a neutral stimulus with a biologically relevant stimulus that results in a what we call a conditioned response, an outcome. So for me, the formerly neutral stimulus was the smell of burning oil. You smell it all the time driving down I-70 and don't give it a second thought. The biologically relevant stimulus for me was fire and my condition response was fear. Okay, so, my, uh, so I can use this concept in my classes to nicely demonstrate these examples. And I can also talk about the extinction of fear. A repeated presentation of the neutral stimulus without the what we call the unconditioned stimulus results in a decrease in the response over time. So for several years, smelling burning oil on the highway or wherever I was resulted in a decrease in my fear response over time. I would get my heart rate would increase, my palms would sweat, I'd want to jump out of the moving vehicle. Over time, thankfully, that response decreased. So we can talk about that in my class as well. And the really other important lesson I learned is um, how to help out students in need. Thankfully, I've never had an encounter with a student with a vehicle engulfed in flames, 
but um, listening to students, listening to what's happening, assessing the situation, and um, deciding what they may need at that time. Sometimes they may just need someone to listen to them, provide support, and maybe you can follow up on things at a later time. So uh, that's my story I use for Pavlovian conditioning, and I'm Mary Kane, and I teach at K-State.